Good afternoon, welcome to another episode of Study Like a Nation. Uh, today we will go through some basic, basic projectile motion question. I will do some more tutorial on more hardcore questions later, but today just let's make sure that we get the basic done, get the basic understood, and get the basic mastered. Now, um, to get, get at the ball rolling, the first question that I've got for you is, imagine that if you have a simple projectile, uh, which has a velocity, initial velocity of 10 meters per second, angle of elevation of 60 degrees off a cliff with a height of 50 meters. You need to find out, number one, the uh, maximum height this particular projectile is going to reach. Number two, the range, i.e. from the base of the cliff to the point of landing. And finally, the final velocity of the projectile. In other words, the moment just before impact, all right, be, uh, you know, when it, it reaches the range at the bottom. Please don't write zero meters per second. I'm trying to be smart with it. Anyway, let's get started. A few basic assumptions, you can skip this bit if you already know this. But basically, what I'm trying to get through to you all have today is the fact that if you're trying to get um, projectile motion going on paper, you need to make two assumptions. Assumptions number one, all your acceleration motion will occur on the vertical axis, all right? And number two, when you actually go through the horizontal axis, you're expecting to have constant speed. People will ask about uh, wind resistance, you know, air density, that sort of stuff. It's not included in this model. Remember, when it comes to physics, the model is only an approximation of reality, not reality itself. Anyway, I'm babbling up here. Let's look at part A up there. You are there to actually determine maximum height. Now, when you think about maximum height, you have two equations in your disposal. The first equation being S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. The other one would be V is equal to uh, U plus AT. Now, uh, I hope you can see that both of these equations up there, oh sorry, there's actually one more up there, it's actually V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS, all right? So uh, if you actually look at the three equations that you have in your disposal, um, the first two require you to have something with regards to time which you don't have access to just yet. But the last one out here, it seems to me that that's the most uh, opportune equation that we can use because the fact that it doesn't require us to actually put in the timing dimension of these particular questions. Now, let's get started. Let's pretend that you are using this particular equation out here. Alright, the next assumption. When you're doing projectile motion, there are a few tricks that you need to know. Number one, at the apex of this trajectory, while your horizontal velocity will maintain the same no matter where you are, thanks to Newton's first law, your vertical velocity at this point in time should actually be equal to zero. Basically, it's, like if you like, uh, it's a lot like if you're tossing an object into the air. The moment when it reaches the very top, it should be momentarily speaking, having a zero vertical velocity component, all right, before it starts to accelerate and come back down towards the ground again. Anyway, so, to get started, you will need to analyze the vertical motion first. Now, if I just plug in 10 meters per second out there, it will not work, because when you look at this 10 meters per second out here, it's at an angle, all right? Now, if you watch the Mythbuster uh, you know, clips on um, bullets fire versus drop, which you can actually find under there, all right? You would notice that it doesn't matter what your horizontal velocity is, it has no impact no impact whatsoever on the vertical motion, all right? So therefore, before I get started, I need to split this component into two. Mathematically speaking, what this means is, if this is 10 meters per second, I want to find out how far this is going, horizontally, and then how fast it is going, vertically. All right, horizontally, I hope you can appreciate that, this is 60 degrees. And basic geometry will tell you that ux will be equals to 10 times cos 60 degrees. And same can apply here. Ui will be 10 times cos oops, sine 60 degrees. Plug in your trusty calculator. All right. So I just fast forward, forward along the calculation, and these are the two figures that you will get for your um, splitting up of the component. Now, let's consider the trip up now. In other words, I'm looking at the journey from 
A to B. Alright? Now, at B, I hope you can appreciate that the vertical component of the speed at that very point should be equal to zero. So therefore, if I'm using B square equals to U square plus 2AS, this should equal to zero. Now U, I'm talking about the vertical component only, which is this bad boy up here. So that for 8.66. And a good practice would be actually storing that value back in your calculator memory button. Now, this part can unhinge many people. For me, every time when I'm doing my calculation, I'll declare the direction of my um, plus, plus and minus sign. Let's pretend that if it's going downwards, it's negative. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that when I actually do my dealing with my calculation, I'll have consistent value for my 9.8. Should I use plus and uh, 9.8 or minus 9.8? Don't debate. Look at what you have designed in the first place. And if you flip the other way, it will work just fine. The maths will always work out. But for this particular tutorial, let's pretend that going down is negative. So this would mean that Alright? Now, we can solve for S now. And with luck, you should be able to get the answer to be 3.8265 meters. But do not write that in the response because the significant figure is wrong. What do I mean by this is if you look back at the question, 2SF, 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 well guess what, stick with 2SF. In this case, you need to actually be careful. You can say that it's either 3.8 meters above the cliff or you can write 53.8 meters above the ground alright but do not just write 3.8265 out there and pretend that you finished the job alright let's move on to part B out there this can be a bit of a pain in the rear end. Reason being, this is not symmetric. So therefore you have to analyze into two separate components. What do I mean by this is when you think about range. Range should be the product between your horizontal speed times it by the overall flight time. But that's a problem. As I've told you before, this is not symmetric. The time it takes to go up versus the time it takes to go down is not the same. So therefore, I hope you can appreciate that you will have to find T1 and T2. T1 being time it takes to get to the top, T2 being the time it takes to go from the top back to the ground. Alright, so let's consider the way up. As you can see, I'm always trying to annotate my thought, making sure the marker understand what I'm trying to achieve. I will use this equation up there. Reason? I know V is equal to zero. U in this case is just UI that I calculated earlier on. So, that will equal to zero. U in this case, we calculated earlier on, it was 8.66. Now, I trust that you'll be using your calculator fairly early on. Plus, remember, that's negative 9.8. People ask why, because I said going downwards is negative. Your acceleration is pulling you down, all right, for gravity, downwards to the ground, negative, yeah. And then in this case, let's call that T1, right? And you should be able to work out T1 equals 2. Now, to the next part. Now, I know that this speed is zero, but I'm not entirely sure what this speed may be. 
So it may be quite useless for me to actually use calculations such as this one up there. But what I can use, however, are maybe this guy instead. Why? When you think about this, s equals to ut plus half at squared. The thing is, since I'm starting here, know that the starting position is different. That means that u is also different. In this case, remember at the very top, this becomes zero. So therefore, what I'm all I have to, all I really have to do is, of course, you can see that that's negative because of the fact that I'm well, declaring going down is negative t squared. And people will say, hang on, what might this value be? But hey, 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 get back in this question up there. See that? Yeah, we've already calculated it. It's simply just. And when we solve for this, now always spend some time to do a bit of reality check when you uh, finish these calculations. Uh, on the way up is a shorter distance compared to on the way down, so therefore this should be a shorter time. Yep, that makes sense. All right, let's finalize the calculation now. Mind you, at the very beginning of this calculation, we declare that range is equal to this lot, isn't it? Yeah. So therefore, I can say that range can actually be equal to ux times t1 plus t2. ux, I already know from previous calculation, that should be 5 times it with the sum between these two times. Now obviously you may not necessarily have to write that many um, certain figures on your calculation on paper. Usually you should uh, have, um, you know, store this in your calculator. I'm just doing this for the sake of clarity. That's all. And of course being good physicists, to your sir, therefore, answer should be 21 meters from the base. Alright people, we're nearly there. Um, as you can see on the board up here, I've finished the other uh, part of the calculation for you. Uh, when you look at part C up there, we're trying to find out, find out you know, the final velocity. Uh, when you think about this, there's horizontal and vertical component. Good news is, because of Newton's first law, we've already found out UX in the first place. Guess what? It will be the same across the entire projectile motion. All we really have to worry about is UY. So, let's get uh, the ball rolling by looking at the trip from B to C, i.e. from the way downwards. Uh, assuming that we're using this humble equation up there, starting on top of U being zero, as we actually discussed before, uh, as it's subject to an other three seconds worth of falling, and we found out that, by the way, from the previous part, because we've got about, which is T2, alright, that should give you a speed of negative 32.4772 and people will say well hang on negative you know that doesn't look right but don't worry you're actually on the right track remember earlier on we said that coming downwards it's negative right well downward just means going downwards like that all right so uh when you try and put the whole thing back together ux we know this you y we know uh, it's actually 32 from the previous calculation but don't forget that you have to actually put them back together into velocity. You remember, asking for velocity, not in the individual components. So therefore, uh, thanks to Pythagoras, we can complete this up here, all right? And we can state that V final can be equals to the square root of each of the um, two straight edges up there, that square and the square root of it. Um, again, being a good physicist, make sure that you get the right SF. You got two SF over there on the left hand side, two SF down here on the right hand side. All right. The last bit, since we're talking about velocity, you can't just tell me the magnitude, you have to tell me also the direction, in this case, theta. So, if you're looking at 10 theta up there, which describes the angle associated with it, um, opposite over adjacent, so therefore you get this expression up there, that will give you 81 degrees, and when you think about this a little bit, it out here is 60 degrees, it will get more steep and more steep as it actually gets towards the ground, isn't it? So that what you should get an angle bigger than 60. 81, yeah, I'm happy. Looks like our reality should be actually, um, you know, uh, getting, um, you know, uh, good results up here. So therefore, uh, don't leave it as 
This is, yeah, presented in the whole package. I'll call that 33 meters per second, 81 degrees below the horizon. All right, tell me where the reference point is, yeah? And in case you're getting a bearing fart in the middle of the exam, that happens a lot. You can actually just draw this as well as, well as it is. All right, I'm happy in Birmingham. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we survived. I'll see you in the next episode. Good luck.